All right guys, so before we get into this whole iceberg, this video took me an insanely long amount of time to make. And all I ask from you guys is, if you do end up enjoying the video or just finding it entertaining at some point, all I ask from you is to subscribe. Hope you guys enjoy this video and let's get into it. Seven twenty seven is a meme in Osu where people see the number seven twenty seven and then they go when you see it. When you see it! When you fucking see it! You fucking uh, holy fuck <laughs> <laughs> I fucking see it. Ohio State University is when you look up Osu on Google and you just find Ohio State University instead. PP cat is basically just Cookie Z's cat. Since Cookie Z has, you know, like a cult following behind him, people wanted to buy that cat. They believe that if this cat was bought, they would get massive amounts of PP just like Cookie Z. And I guess it became a meme also that that PP cat is now evolved into White Cat and they're like connected. So the PP cat got a hold of a tablet and started to play Osu. Who's Afraid of the Big Black is one of the probably the most known maps in Osu, the Big Black. It's just the guy saying, Who's afraid of the big Please Enjoy Game is a mindset created by Ruruchi and Please Enjoy Game basically just means play Osu and just have fun. It's just a game at the end of the day. Osu is just a game. Osu Laser, Peppy's, I guess, sequel to Osu that he's been making since like 2017, 18. It's been delayed, you know, multiple years, multiple times. Peppy's still working on it and it's still being made. So cancelled Osu merch, uh, I'll be showing it on the screen, but you know, back in like from 2008 to 2000, like 2017, there was tons of Osu merch, like the Osu mug, Osu shirts, hoodies, sweaters, buttons, like pins, all of this stuff you could buy back then. It's all been pretty much cancelled and now it's all lost to time. And probably the most ridiculous of them all, the Osu clock. Actually, somebody still owns a copy of the Osu clocks to this day. Peppy got banned. Peppy was like messing with the coding and database of Osu. Somewhere in the code, it like allowed users to submit scores for him. People submitted way too many scores and he got banned. The system flagged him as like cheating. But it's not really that low because a lot of people know about it thanks to videos. Osu stream is the mobile version and the arcade version of Osu. The whereabouts of Osu arcade machines is pretty unknown, but I'm pretty sure they're not being manufactured. They might be, they might just be stored in some like warehouse or something. Discontinued Osu magazine. Basically that just refers to in 2011 there was an Osu magazine being made. There was reference to be five Osu magazines made and they had tons of effort, tons of like bright art, tons of text, useful information, notepad edit. Back in around 2008 or so, they edited the map using notepad and then they could change like the AR values to like 8 or 9 when the real value was 10 let's say. And then they would go play a map and the map would play as AR9 but when the score was submitted it was technically AR10. So they were basically AR editing it. Raffis JavaScript. Basically it was Raffis is a hacker. His cursor changes direction in a very choppy manner. As someone who is a professional coder, I can guarantee that these movements are from an algorithm designed in Java. These movements are from an algorithm designed in Java. Masterpiece 3 mod. Masterpiece 3 mod refers to Cookie Z's infamous ban in 2014 on a map called Masterpiece. At first, it was believed that he banned himself on the map, but it's been confirmed that he didn't actually ban himself. He let a friend play on his account and he um, did it on Masterpiece because Masterpiece was like a map that he was hackazated on before on his legit score. So I guess it was like ironic that he did it on Masterpiece. Peppy quits coding in 2017. Peppy said that he would quit coding in 2018 if Laser would not come out. So I did promise the release of Laser in 2017, even going as far as saying I'd quit if this didn't happen. And it didn't come out. It still didn't come out three years later. So uh, yeah. So Sony Relax is when a player named Sony was using um, Relax on stream. Fire, which was a person who was spectating, gave him a map. If you had Relax hack on, it would like jump scare a stream. And if you had Relax on, you had no way to turn it off or like, you know, prevent it from happening. And yeah, then they found out that he was using Relax. With this, and it was really funny. And yeah, then he got banned shortly after. Peppy, Nazi fork incidents. There's been many NSFW incidents from Peppy. 
one time and during an OWC event in 2012, he leaked some hentai on his computer, and it was then found to be from his recycle bin. And then there's times where he's like said some you know really questionable stuff to people. Most recently, there's the one where he was like talking about this one like like underage girl or something. So as questionable as this whole thing looked for Peppy, he did give a response and say that, that he does say stupid stuff at times without thinking. It was intended to be a joke, but obviously it was in bad taste. Peppy said that his humor was just not correct anymore, but he will subdue it for the greater good. But the community was very understanding of this, and they realized that it's just a small joke. Even if it is a little in bad taste, you know, it, we all make mistakes. He was trying to make the game a better place. He was trying to deal with the with the moderation of backgrounds. Yeah, it's pretty funny. There's a lot of a lot of incidents. I don't have all of them, but yeah. 8Key cancelled. This was super unexpected when it happened. So it began on 8Key's Twitter and now 8Key's Twitter is gone. While it was still active, he was like, things are going to come out about me. I'm sorry everyone for not being the person you expected. So what had happened was that was gonna be his suicide note. Like that was his, gonna be his last words before he committed suicide by hanging. He was gonna hang himself, but then at the very last second, his brother came in and stopped it. And the reason why he tried to commit suicide was because he felt like so much guilt because he was talking to an underage girl. That whole thing I'm not too sure about, I'm gonna remain biased about that. He was 18 and she was 15. He had sent pictures to her, so it was like, and that whole thing skyrocketed and tons of drama happened about that. I'm not gonna talk too much about it, but yeah. So then, so pretty much now, Aki is canceled and he quit Osu pretty much forever. But the funny thing is he still streams on Twitch and he, he doesn't stream any Osu at all, but every time you like reference Osu, he would just say like stuff like Osu was a coping mechanism he will never come back. It was like his way to escape. There was a player in North Korea and he was playing in North Korea. And obviously that is crazy because you can't use internet in North Korea. It's prohibited. How he was able to access North Korea was, he actually was uh, Canadian originally, but he moved to North Korea for studies. And I think it was something like his dad was a professor. The way he was able to play Osu was he had a VPN that allowed him to use the internet in North Korea. They were really nice to him. It was super like odd, of course. That's how North Korea is. But now he changed his life back to Canada. So now he's living in Canada. Loki Chaos 4-digit 1kpp. He said 1kpp on ROG, on limitation, as a 4-digit. And Loki Chaos is known for his insane reading abilities and his uh, double tapping. He's been banned multiple times, like at least 4 or 5 times, I think. Recently he got unbanned, but before that they were all like, you know, he's a cheater, but now he's unbanned. He's legit now. But we'll see what happens. His story changes quite a bit every couple months. Burst Limit is Cookie Z's multi account. So before he got unbanned in 2016, he made an account called Burst Limit, and that's not the first multi account he's had. He's had multiple multi accounts. This random guy called Burst Limit came out and started saying some like really crazy scores, like like losing to FC. At this point, Cookie Z, you know, he was never gonna come back. It was never announced that he would be returning to Osu, and his scores look a lot like Cookie Z. The type of methods, like the the, the play style, the score, they all look like similar. And then it was found to be that with Cookie Z. Kadeem Salford. So Kadeem Salford is some dude on YouTube who played Osu. And obviously he's at a beginner level. He was known for probably his spinning. He would use his whole entire desk and ramming the mouse and it was insane. He had Amari on hooker's ass, so yeah, you heard me right. Somebody did actually hire a hooker, and this is in a foreign country. I don't know what the foreign country is. And what they did was, instead of just being like, doing what you do with a hooker, they took their laptop out and their tablet, and they played Hidemari no Uta and double tapped it while it was on, like, her ass. A few moments later. Close enough. Cookie Z killed by grenade. I don't know where the origins of it are, but I'm pretty sure somebody tweeted out that Cookie Z was in the military and he got killed by a grenade during his practices. And obviously later found to be a joke, but at that time people didn't know if it was a joke or not. And some people actually believed that he died from a grenade, but it was just a meme. It was mainly just people like messing around with people. This random string of text with the word Cookie Z in it and Osu, it's this video I'm gonna show. Cookies, 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 cook, cook, cookies. The with you, the with you, rhythm, rhythm, beat dance, beat dance. The video looks like it has like no 
logical reason behind it, but actually it was made by this dude who makes parody videos, and it just so happened that in like 2013, happened to find Osu and did his version of the Osu parody stunt or whatever he does, so it's still pretty strange to watch and it's really mysterious. Legendary. He first got an FC on Image Material in 2014, and people are like, who is this guy? This guy is like insane. Then he got banned. Offline on a private server called Guitari, owned by Fire Digger, he FC'd Milk Crown, which is like nine stars, and his aim was laughably cheated. And here's Fire Digger's response to his play. It's not really that suspicious. It looks completely fine to me. Completely fine to me. So yeah, that was a really big meme. And then he came back and got unbanned. He played storytellers with DT, and that was also pretty blatant. You may think that he's a cheater, but people still don't know if he's actually cheating or not. It was never really proved. I mean, sure his aim was blatant, he still could be legit, and that's why he's on this. Smoothie World. Smoothie World is a guy who, he had 10 dogs, right? Um, let's just say that what he did to those dogs probably should not be mentioned in this video to keep it PG-13. And Smoothie Road is like a top 50 player back then and a very well-known mapper. And obviously he's not known anymore. Unbeatable 2008 scores. There's these 2008 maps where the number one is unsnipable. Now you may think it's like, okay, why? Is it cheated or is it like hacked? But back in 2008, the spinner went up to like 700 rage per minute so back then they spun to like the incredible amounts of score and you can't beat those scores because they eventually removed it so you can only go up to 477 with spinners so the 2016 trading fiasco has cry nara glitter goose seiko and my gh69 so cry was some top 10 cheater from the uk and he streamed himself time warping to ban himself He's never been seen ever since. Nara is a Korean top 10 player who was found to be cheating using probably the same that Cry was using. I don't know. Glitter Goose was like some AR11 player who was world renowned AR11 skill and then he was found to also be cheating. And then Seiko was a player who had like over a thousand multi accounts and will never be unbanned. And also, there's another story to Seiko, but that's deeper down. So yeah, there's another cheater. And the final cheater is like also not one particular cheater, but actually like tons of Korean players. It's MyGH69. It's a Korean multi-account that a lot of Korean top players use and top Korean cheaters. So basically names like it's rumored to be Firebat, people like that played on MyGH69. Horo is cheaterless. Horo is known for making Foxbox which is a tablet cover like service. It makes you tablet covers but anyway he was also known like to have this cheater list which encompassed a bunch of these names and a lot of them were just random jabs at people like it may not even have been true they just said random names but people in this list were actually found to be cheating i don't know off the top of my head or i'll, I'll show it on the screen right now who was actually cheating but most of them were not cheating and it was like laughed upon that like how inaccurate his list was peppy family business peppy's name is dean herbert right and his dad is named john herbert and I'll, in, in a second i'll get to why i know that so a peppy's origin is from australia right so some kid from Australia, they found out who Peppy's dad was, and apparently Peppy's dad sells paintings. So they called Peppy's dad, and they kept on spamming the call like, line over and over again. This got Peppy really annoyed, of course. So Peppy banned this guy from Osu, like entirely, because he kept on annoying his dad. So yeah, Cookie Z boosted multiple accounts. I have a video here from an internet cafe, but you can see Cookie Z. This is a live play from 2012, and he's playing on a friend's account named Choco Liddy. So you can see in the bottom left, apparently that's Chocolate's account that Cookie Z is playing on. So he set this pretty decent score for the time on Freedom Dive on his account. And it's also rumored that he boosted a lot of other friends' accounts. Because back then, multi-accounting wasn't really frowned upon that much. Obviously it was bannable, but there wasn't much in place to detect, you know, the multi-accounting if it was being done or not. So it wasn't as much of a taboo practice as it is now. So yeah, he boosted multiple accounts. No username limitation. Basically, I got this from Willy. Willy told me that in 2008 or so, you were able to type your username without having any limitations in your character. So you could have like hashtags, ads, any character you want. And this resulted in having names that are permanently in the Osu like database, 
that have like these names that you cannot get anymore. I'll show some on the screen. They're actually pretty sick. All of these accounts were made in 2008 with no limitation. You cannot get these names ever again because it was removed to get this. Rainy Emmy $1,800 live play. So Rainy Emmy has a pretty extensive history, but to summarize it, Rainy Emmy was known as an SS only player, right? Pretty impressive. And then all of a sudden they announced that, that they quote unquote killed themselves. But actually two years later or so, they actually came back to life and defied the laws of human nature. So actually they faked their death and apparently they were having severe mental issues and stuff like that. But the question was, why are they still cheating? Because Rainy Emmy, shortly after the ban wave, Rainy Emmy did not play on their account at all. Like, not a single play. And the fact that Rainy Emmy has such a mysterious aura to their account, you know, SS only, you know, never streamed, only has like a couple live plays that barely show any legitimacy at all. They had weird aim, and people just believed they cheated. Vinxis offered Rainy Emmy $500 to do a live play, and Rainy Emmy declined it. And then somebody else gave them $1,000 to do a live play, and they declined it. And then somebody eventually gave them up to $1,800 to do a live play. Like, even if you're not cheating, $1,800 for an Osu live play is a lot of money. And even then, they still didn't want to do a live play. And basically, if you don't want to do a live play that you get $1,800 for, then you must be cheating. Like, there's no other doubt about it. Peppy Churchfire. Um, on his channel, uh, if you go really, really far back, you can see a video of him filming a church, and it's actually on fire. And this was, and some people theorize that Peppy burned this church down himself. He committed arsony, and he com and he recorded it live on his camera. But obviously, that's not true. Speaking of Peppy, um, his old videos, a lot of them are pretty interesting. But his old videos have a lot of stuff that's you know random, questionable. But out of all of it, the church fire is, I guess. Omnius. Rimoy is known best for being associated with AQN. AQN, like I said before, is the cheat that most cheaters use before the ban wave. AQN's origins don't actually start with Rimoy. People believe that Rimoy created AQN, but it actually wasn't Rimoy. Rimoy is a person who joined AQN around 2017-2018 time. So they made Time Warp, they made the replay editor, they made all of the, they made, they made basically all of the cheats that um, was used before uh, pre-ban wave. Homeless Osu player. An Osu player actually became homeless. There's a whole Reddit post about it that I can look through. I remember it was a serious post. Also, his name was Don's Day. So Don's Day became homeless. LKS. So LKS is a player from China who used to play way back in like 2008 or so. The reason why he's on this list is because he was found to be an extremely popular um, YouTuber, has over a million followers on this Chinese website. So this guy who just played Osu in 2008 casually became a basically internet celebrity. The reason why we know this is the same guy is because of this screenshot here that I'm gonna post. Reshi. So Reshi, is a player who got banned in 2019 or so before he was found to be cheating he was a very he seemed to be a very good player he could even maybe even get like top 20 top 15 top 10 even maybe so then he got banned but then there's more to his name so very unfortunate things there but then um luckily he was found to be alive there was this whole thing like even if you were a cheater committing suicide is something you no one should ever go through FGJK123FJ. Now, most people have no idea who that even is or what that even is. So, as he's, I'm on his profile right now, and he has this gray question mark flag. And when you click on it, it doesn't go anywhere. Like, it has no meaning. And whenever you make a new account, usually it doesn't show this question mark thing. So, basically, his account is dead. He's not actually dead, but his account is dead, which means the account was created, but nobody ever logged into it. Nana Shi Rei. They ran the beep map pack mirror for Osu. They actually died. Speaking of Osu accounts that passed away, with the sheer amount of people that have played Osu, of course, you know, someone's gonna unfortunately um, pass away. So, of course, um, there's gonna be tons of accounts that are still, you can still view to this day, but they're actually, the original owner is dead. Pretty eerie. It's like going through like a Osu graveyard. So next up is Biko. So everybody believes that Biko is legit, right? And so I'll give a little backstory to who Biko was. So Biko joined originally in 2010 of January. And originally they first started playing mouse only. They were pretty good at mouse. They weren't like anything crazy, but they were a top, they were sort of a top player back then. And then they started playing touchscreen. So that was interesting for them. And then eventually they went to tablet plus keyboard which is what most people know him by. So Biko was known as this offline player. He would take large breaks from Osu and then suddenly come back out of nowhere and set some insane score, like first try, and then just log out again. So already it was a little suspicious why he did this, like why don't we just play online? 
but he had the excuse of I play offline, and that's why he did that. But actually, some new infos came up, and I guess I'll tie this into the next entry, which is Fire Digger Biko VK. Some people remember that Biko one time fluffed in Russian, which is strange because he's, isn't he supposed to be Korean? So basically, either Fire Digger is completely wrong and all of these coincidences are insane and crazy about Biko, or the more likely situation is that Biko is actually Russian and he is a cheater. That has hit everything. It is really strange for a Korean player to, a quote unquote Korean top player to have these behaviors. It is pretty strange. Sheen. So Sheen is a player who has reached top 100 multiple times with multiple accounts and he's also pretty infamous as I'm bad Mr. Boom Method so Mr. Boom Method is a meme between the OC community they say Mr. Boom Method is this or this or this I don't know if I should actually be telling you what the Mr. Boom Method actually is but it's actually a skin and I don't think I'm, a, I don't think I'm allowed to go any more in depth about what it is, but it is a skin. And it, it does give you advantages on the gameplay. I don't know why it's called a Mr. Boom method. Either Mr. Boom created it or some association, but I guess we can just say that Mr. Boom made it. BN Time Warps. BN standing for Beat Map Nominator. The people that, you know, say if a map is ranked status or not. So this person on screen time warped um, on Osu, obviously blatantly, but he like, uh, his UR was extremely, you know, unnatural. And he was a beat map nominator at the time too. But eventually his status as BN got removed because obviously he cheated. Rumoy Anti-Cheat. As we know, Rumoy is a lead developer in AQN, the Aquila Network. So his origins actually go back all the way 2014. Ramoy before this has never made, you know, a killer network, the, the cheat that top players use. Ramoy asks Pepe to join the developer team because he has made an anti-cheat. So this anti-cheat works for everything. Counters all of the public hacks, all of the known hacks, probably private hacks, but it doesn't it doesn't detect one thing, his own cheats that he made for himself. It is not open source, so Pepe cannot figure this out. And therefore Pepe says no because it is not open source. And that is the Ramoy anti-cheat. But it goes even further. A few months later, Ramoy is like, okay, you don't allow me to make the anti-cheat, so I'm gonna make the replay editor a few months later. And then after a year, it's for sale. Okay, so now AQN, quote unquote AQN, not AQN yet, but his replay editor is for sale and that is now his income in a way. So three years later, he finally joins the Aquila network, the AQN. And what he does is he takes all the cheats and he remodels them to be insanely good. Like undetectable, very good for cheating, top players use it. And it took all the way until the ban wave. And that was like two years later. So yeah, but um, after he remodels all the cheats, he actually joins a private server team. This is Gatari and Akatsuki. And he makes them anti-cheats. They've proven to be very good. So and then later, what he does after the private server anti-cheat, he goes to Bancho, Bancho anti-cheat called Ruri. So he makes Ruri and it's a very good anti-cheat. Still, Pepe does not want to take it. So then after that, he keeps on developing AQ and making it better and undetectable. Finally, Pepe understands um, how the cheats are working, and he detects it. And after that, um, Ramoy quit forever. So uh, yeah, that's Ramoy's anti-cheat. James and Dawn's. Basically, Dawn's Day is a guy, you know, he's known for his hidden flashlight stuff. He mods for r slash OC report. He made various avatar collabs with this guy named James, also known as Cool Username. And James is no longer found in Osu, I think he quit. So Dawn's and James had a lot of collabs. I'll show them on screen. And a lot of them are highly questionable. And one of them in particular, the probably the most famous one, is the Elliot Roger collab they did. But this caused him to get actual time off Osu, because their collab was, I guess, too offensive. So that was highly debatable. Sapphire Ghost Note. So Sapphire Ghost was a pretty well-known player in 2015, 2014. They were insanely good. They played in OWC, but eventually OC was taking up way too much time for them. And it led to a lot of mental health issues like depression and suicidal thoughts. So what they did was they wrote a note on their profile. They've changed it. Um, quite a few revisions have been made. Sapphire Ghost wrote a note and I'll read it. Um, at one time it was believed to be a suicide note. Suicide is a 
pretty far stretch as Sapphire Ghost has still been found to be actively on the internet and still alive. So yeah, Fire Digger married. So Fire Digger actually got married a couple days ago. And an Osu player getting married. Yeah, that's on the iceberg, I guess. Real time priority fix. Real time priority. I'm not too sure about everything, but basically players are reporting that Osu has been super laggy. The lag spikes are incredible. You know, every single map it's just it's just horrible. It's locked on high priority by default. And a way for players to you know, change their game to not be laggy is by changing high priority to real time priority. Basically, Peppy advised everybody to not change their priority to real time as it messes with like windows and all this other stuff. But people were saying like, who are you to judge to change our priority, you know? It's our computer, we can do whatever we want. Kuyo slash Idkai. Kuyo was a player who was banned for multi-accounting and for cheating. He's made several live plays of his hard rock ability. At that time when Idkai was still number one, Kuyo was banned, but his ability for hard rock, it was insanely good. Like he could have been better than Idkai. He has plays like these and these, and they're extremely well for his skill. Like if Kuyo was legit, Legit, and he just multi-accounted, he could easily beat Itki and be the number one hard rock player. Eventually he did get unrestricted, but then he got banned again. The question still remains if he got banned for multi-accounting or if he was actually cheating. I mean, you can go through his live plays and you can analyze it and they seem pretty legit. He also has private server scores that are still up to this day. I guess they're not found to be cheated. There's no suspicious play, so you never know. He could be cheating. He could not be cheating. And it's really up to anybody's debate about Kuya. Banned during first OWC. So in the first Osu World Cup, just known as OWC1, a player was banned. The reason why he was banned was pretty outrageous at the time. The community was like at a super, it was like an outcry to not have him banned. Alternative. Alternative is a user you can find on the Osu website. And if you go on their profile, they were last seen seven years ago. And they have their interest as sorry and their occupation as sorry. And then their me says going to die. So based on all this information, people believe that this person is dead and they committed suicide. They have not been online in seven years and they have a bio like that. Obviously it is not 100% true where this guy could be, but um, it is probably assumed that he may have probably killed himself. Seiko. So I actually intended to talk about Seiko in a whole entire different video. I already have a script written. The year was 2016 and a player who went by the name of Seiko was banned for the reason of using a private relaxed client and for having over 200 accounts to their name. This would prompt Peppy to forbid Seiko from ever accessing his main account again. At first, Seiko was just thought to be another Osu cheater, but as months would go by, nothing was heard from him. His main friend group began to wonder, where did he go? And after undergoing a deep dive into Seiko's history, well, that's where we get into a rabbit hole. Usually, when a user isn't seen to be online in a long time, it can mean one of two things. Either they move on from the internet to pursue a different avenue, or, well, I think you know where this is going. Ben wasn't always known as the most stable guy ever, and with the groups that he hung around with, especially having over 200 Osu accounts, was not exactly the best idea. Depressive episodes would start to become more and more common, and to cope, addictions, which led to substance abuse. A user who was known to hack into high-profile accounts Reach out to Seiko. He sent Seiko a payment of $300 USD. Now, from an outsider's point of view, it looked like he was helping out Seiko, but this could not be further from the truth. So the guy who made Seiko's private cheats, he was able to see how many times he had logged in, and in the past few months, he had not logged in at all. And also on his VPN that was shared with his friends, he had also stopped using that one as well. So efforts would reach out to try to find his real name from when he last logged in or to reaching out to any related members. And then a discovery was found his family's Facebook account. It was uncovered that he had passed away from an overdose. Now this is where 300 USD came into play. His other name that he went by was Ben AQN, presumed to be involved in the creation of a cheating website. From looking at Ben's Reddit account, you could find traces of frequent substance abuse laced all over it. There was a post of Ben claiming to be completely clean, but that faded away, and eventually, he had fallen back into a relapse, shortly before his passing. As Keenan says, rest in peace to Ben. He was of course hated by many, if not everybody. But still, nobody, and I mean nobody, should have to go through what Ben did. Megumi. Megumi is, you could say, the sequel to AQN. And for a while, many top players were using Megumi, and it was even better than AQN, and it was not detected at all. But eventually, Peppy did discover about this new cheat called Megumi, and now it's been closed. Okay, cat, so here we got the egg. Oh! <gasps> Oh, I love cat. Oh my god. Recent private cheats. So recently there have been private cheats being made. Obviously, I don't know the exact private cheats, but I do know about one that's recently come out. It's called Maple. 
And basically, there's just stuff like this that's being made and still being, you know, privately owned by people and redistributed. Z-Trot Proctologist Visit. Z-Trot Proctologist Visit is referring to a map. I believe it's the most disliked map in Osu. It has the most negative ratings. It's a pretty weird map and it's super strange to play. That is not the reason why it's so far down. We will get into why it's this far down into the next layer. Just keep that in mind for now. Beat Map Pack 139. So beatmap packs in Osu have been a long-standing tradition ever since the beginning of the game. So a player actually found that if you go to beatmap number 139, in one of the maps, there's a background which has not safe for work content. So that's a thing. Yeah. Morgan. Morgan is a player who has gone through many controversial phases. I can't find his exact origin, but I can find that he replied to Osu support on Twitter and he said that he was banned for cheating twice. So he was a known cheater in the community, but what most people know him for was that he actually got unbanned. He seemed to be a very promising player. All of his plays seemed to be legit. He was an up and coming speed player looking to be probably around top 10 to be honest somewhere in that range. But eventually during the infamous ban wave of banning all AQN users, he got banned. He was in the top of the list. And his response was deleting all of his socials, privating most of his YouTube videos, only a couple are left. The real question is, is he still a good player? Because he may have been banned for cheating. It's really debated if his speed is legit. Cause looking at his live plays, they seem to be not that suspicious. So the general consensus is that Morgan is legit but there's so much around him that is still unexplained and unknown. There's many rumors about Morgan, like he was a pathological liar, he faked all of his live plays, he faked even his, his CSGO and like other games. A lot of mystery and aura is surrounding him. Howlwater. So Howlwater was a top player back then. So he seemed to be a pretty good player. He had a weird habit where he would double tap jumps and also get really strange act. He seemed to be a pretty good player. But then one day he decided to blatantly cheat a score in Gangsta, one of his most infamous scores, and he got himself banned because of it. After his blatant um, ban for cheating, eventually word was not known from him for a while, until the release of Fortnite would come out. Yes, Fortnite. And How Water's videos would get an insane rise of popularity, mainly on the editing course or whatever. They would, these would get millions of views. And the reason why we know it's How Water is because the name is also How, and I believe it's on the same channel that had his Osu uh, live plays on over a quarter of a million subscribers, and then out of nowhere he just deletes all the videos. And it's rumored that he sold his channel. Client unlock. When you get restricted in Osu, you're not able to access the client. It locks you out and you can't even log in. So a bypass to this, what players have done, is a cheat to unlock your client to where you can still log in. And there's multiple other ways to do it, but this is the most popular method. GusGH0825 IRL meetup. So I've talked about GusGH before and whether he's legit or not is still up in the air for discussion, but what can be confirmed is that he actually was seen at an IRL meetup with a lot of Korean players, including like Firebat and Flying Tuna, a lot of high profile names. For a cheater to like hang out with all these top players and have their trust, you know, I mean, it is pretty unlikely. With this information, I guess just Gus GH just likes to play offline and he doesn't really have a problem not being on Bancho. Azuki reselling RPR. Azuki is some, what, some cheat developer, right? And then what he did was he resold RPR, which is another cheat, for his own money. Barvalian cheats. So a heads up, Barvalian, okay, obviously he doesn't cheat, but what did happen to Barvalian was that his account was hacked into in 2019. What these people did that hacked his account, they posted a fake message saying, I'm sorry guys, I cheated all my plays. And it just caused a bunch of unneeded drama and, you know, yeah, that happened to Barvalian. Alien sold account. So Alien was an OWC player, and what he did was he sold his account. Shabit Ban. So Shavit was infamous for cheating and then being an admin on a private server called Ripple and then leaking the source code of Osu. Shavit did a lot of hacking into accounts, some developers, some admins, yeah just a lot of stuff like that. Zalys' eyes have awoken. So back in around 2015, if you were found to be cheating in Osu, 10 seconds before they pulled the ban hammer on you, you would get this message. Zalys' eyes have awoken and it would like jump scare you and play like a little alarm. So this replay that we're seeing is the last few seconds of a cheater playing on Osu. Yeah, no longer, obviously no longer does this happens anymore, but it's still a pretty sick easter egg. EU slash CIS account selling spree. Basically it just refers to a bunch of Europeans and CIS who sold their account. I don't know the exact reason for the selling spree. Cheat was detected 
or whatnot, but yeah, this also includes Alien and a lot of other names. Fun Orange Multi Account. It was 2016, and there was a report made. So first, he took a picture of his second account user page, which has these plays. Oh yeah, FO42. So the reason why he made a multi account was because Azer locked him out of his other account. So he just played on this one instead. Kuyo Motis, the insane hard rock player who could rival 8 He has tons of multi accounts. It's unsure whether or not these plays are also legit, but yeah, this the fact that how mysterious it is, it's pretty unknown. Lily Pichu Boosted. So Lily Pichu is a popular streamer and content creator. She also has an Osu account and she played Osu like 12 years ago. The reason to why it's believed that she's boosted, randomly gets 60 and 70 and all of a sudden a 129. So I mean, it, it can be argued that she just like obviously, you know, like played offline or something or like played a random map because it has been, you know, um, PP milestones have been skipped before and you know, you can get a pop off, but I mean, Lily Pichu is not really that much of an Osu player. Like, she has played it before, but it, she said that she used to play League, like just a warm up in League. And I don't know why she would get boosted. I mean, it's just something funny, I guess. Korean Replay Splicer. Okay, well, it was confirmed. The Korean Replay Splicer did exist, but any screenshots, any downloads of it is unknown. And what it was known to do, what it was meant to splice replays together, and it was only available to Korean community at the time. Basically, it just allowed for undetectable replays. It was known to have segments, and it might still even be used today. Rumoi aim assist still used by three top players. Basically, it is what it just is. Um, Rumoi made an aim assist, and it's still being used by three top players. You, you can see how some players, they reference that there are still cheers in the top 100, even after all of the ban waves, all of the restrictions, all of the detections, there's still stuff being used by top 100. And a lot of names pop up that you have no idea who they are, they just came out of nowhere. Whether they are legit or not, or using private cheats is up for debate. Annie the Eagle. So, Annie the Eagle is some super deep lore. Basically, Annie the Eagle is the original creator of AQN. It was never Ramoy, it is Annie the Eagle. That is the reason why an Eagle logo is used. Also known that Annie the Eagle was a pretty strange person as well. Um, their whereabouts are super unknown nowadays. Peppy injected malware. It was discovered that when you would load up Osu, it would give you some malware issues. And this wasn't just like a coincidence. Apparently when Peppy was testing for cheats or testing for something in the code, he injected quote unquote malware um, to see if it would be detected by Osu's code. I don't know too much about this and I'm sure it wasn't for any ill intent, but it is still malware. Strager. I looked up Strager's name and what came up was a Twitch channel. And what he does is he basically codes and is really good at coding apparently. He helps you with coding. But back then in around 2000, 2008 or so, he had a signature on his profile. Stuff you can like put pictures in or whatnot. But with this, if you load Straker's signature, he hacked into Osu's website and he made it. So every time a player would load up his signature, it would auto vote a map um, for map of the year. And this brings our point back to Z-Trot Proctologist Visit. This is the map that Strager coded it to where everybody would upvote it. And eventually Peppy was so fed up and so mad that Strager did this that he removed his name from the database. This is different from a regular ban. A regular ban, you know, your name's still in the database, it can still be recovered. But with this, you are never allowed to get back into Osu. Everything is wiped, everything's deleted, all traces are gone. That was Strager. And finally, the deepest and darkest of the iceberg that we can go down, T underscore old. Well, it all starts in a 2017 article, German police hunt for child killer who boasted of murder on dark web. Police in Germany are hunting for a man who was believed to have murdered a 9-year-old child and boasted about it on the internet. The 19-year-old suspect, named by the German press as Marcel Hess, posted a video about the murder on the dark web. So the child was stabbed to death around like 54 times and actually there's like three videos covered by very popular YouTubers about this one person named as the 4chan killer. So he was heavily drunk in a dark web chat room one day and he was planning to do the murder of the nine-year-old. Then he posted an, an image of himself grinning and holding a bloodstained knife. And then after this, he threatened to commit a second murder. An intense manhunt was underway with police helicopters and sniffer dogs searching for Marcel. During this time, they did not find him. So he was still on the run. The FBI got involved. Everybody got involved to try finding this guy. So Marcel tried to kill himself, but he didn't succeed. His last online activity can be found here. Okay, let's look on it. What can go wrong? And then he claimed on Fortune that he killed a woman on 8 a.m. after he tortured her to get her bank account information. 
So the police at this point still cannot find them. They arrested someone who they believe was Marcel, but there was no evidence that that was the killer. And now there's more articles on it, tons of just German stuff, looking for Marcel H. So eventually the FBI went through all this stuff, and this is what they found. They found WhatsApp chat with his friend, and that's the blood. I cannot show that on... Okay, I cannot show that on here. So here's his Discord channel that they found, and obviously it is not valid anymore. Then they have, believe it or not, his OSU profile, and that is how it's connected back to this iceberg. So the FBI dug through all his computer stuff, and they found his OSU profile, make it tea old, and you can still browse it to this day. This dude killed a nine-year-old child innocently, and brutally tortured and murdered uh, like another woman. Here's his profile. He only played Spun Out. Here's the news, more police stuff, and audio files. Okay, well apparently the audio of his call is um, public, so okay, what can go wrong? And then eventually, he was arrested. I don't know, where, where are his whereabouts now? Welcome to the outro. If you made it this far, I hope you've enjoyed this video, even if just a tiny bit. Osu, it may look like a pretty peaceful game, but it does have some pretty dark history, and you can honestly make this iceberg video two hours, three hours. There's just so much stuff that could be talked about, but unfortunately, I am just one person. Um, before I go, I never would have imagined myself in a situation where I can upload videos and have an audience where people will watch it, but I will say that this video will be one of the last I make on this channel just because I have lost all interest in Osu. At this point, it's almost become like a job for me, this whole YouTube thing. So, this video was meant to be like I ended off with a bang and, you know, leave you guys with something very good to watch. Osu content is going in the pretty bad direction. It's just a bunch of short videos and whatnot. In terms of Osu content, there's really not much further I can really go, you know? Yeah, enough rambling. Just want to give a big shout out to everybody who watched to the ending and yeah leave a comment which one you thought was the creepiest and i will have to say thank you guys so much for watching hope you guys have a good rest of your day and goodbye